I'm so happy you tuned in to Sounds of Revival telecast. Today you're going to be hearing the wonderful and mighty word of God. I'm going to be preaching on conquering your stronghold. Amen. And I hope you had a very merry Christmas. And I bless you and may the favor of the Lord accompany you in this new year 2019. Enjoy. Whenever I'm in a bad situation, I fall on my knees and pray. After I prayed for just a little while, you know the Lord always makes a way. Even though Satan tried so very hard to get all in my way. But when I lay myself before the Lord, you know the devil's got to get out my way. Oh, my way. Till the power of the Lord comes down. I'm so glad of this joy I found. Until he gives me my rescue. situation he gives me blessed consolation lets me to know that the trial won't last always it's so good to know that your prayers will be answered just have faith and the lord will see you through when i pray Till the power of the Lord comes down. So glad of this joy I found. Till he gives me my rescue. He always comes to my rescue. I pray and I moan. Yeah, why don't you call him? Call the Lord. Call him. Call the Lord. Call him. Call him, call 
Yes. I'm ministering on conquering your stronghold. And the main passage of the Bible comes from 2 Samuel 5th chapter. But before, I'm, I'm reading in the book of Romans, in the New Testament, Romans 5th chapter and verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> we are called to reign in life. Hallelujah. In the second book of Samuel, fifth chapter, Starting at the first verse, then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel. Thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. Amen. People came to David. And they had the spirit of unity with him, with them rather. And it's very important for us to choose who comes in our life. Oftentimes, problems come from people, and we didn't, and we didn't discern. What type of people they were. And these people, they notice in David the calling of God in his life. And they had this spirit of unity. They said, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. It's very important as a pastor. To have people that believe in his calling. And it's very important as an employer that the employees believe in the employer and the company in which they work with. There is strength in unity. Amen. And God wants us to be united. Even the body of Christ, Jesus, his body, the church. God wants us to be united, amen, together. The blood of Jesus unites us. The Holy Spirit unites us. God, our Father, <laughs> he unites us. We have the same Father, amen. And they came to David and they had this spirit of unity and they said, we are thy bone and thy flesh. There is much strength in unity. When we are united and we work together, just like this morning, yesterday we took down uh, most of the Christmas decoration in my home. And this morning, my wife was putting away the dishes, Christmas dishes, away. And I saw her doing this. And what happened, I helped her out. Instead of her climbing on the chair, coming down, climbing on the chair, coming down. Amen. I placed myself close by, and I gave her the dishes, and she was able to to put them away. Amen. It took less time. It was more effective and more enjoyable doing it 
with somebody else than alone. And God, amen, it's, it's like that. We are more effective when we are united together. Amen. And people, they notice in David that he was the one called to be the king. They saw when David went out and came back, he never lost a battle with the Philistines. And they saw David as a conqueror. Even though Saul was the king, they noticed that David had the victory in his life. And they said, thou shalt feed my people Israel. Thou shalt be a captain over Israel. When we are called for a cause, we don't have to go around and telling people, listen, I'm called for this, I'm called for that. My calling is this, my calling is that. People will notice our calling. Amen. It's like when people, they get operated and they get the kidney taken out of their body. And they replace the kidney. And they give some medication, amen, for, for the kidney to, to operate. They give the medication because the body knows that this kidney is at his. But if I cut my finger and it falls on the ground and I pick up my finger and replace it, it's going to start welding again. Amen. Why? Because the body recognizes that this finger belongs to it. And it's the same thing in our life. When we are out of place, the body of Christ, the church, God's people, will notice that <laughs> we are trying, but it doesn't work out. But when we are in... But when we are in our calling, people will notice, amen, that we are in our place and we have the blessing of God. And what we do, God is with us in it. And they notice that David was supposed to be the king of Israel, even though Saul was the king. Amen. And the elders of Israel, the representatives of God's people, they came to Hebron. Hebron means unity. And they made a league with, with David. And they anointed David king over all Israel. Amen. I don't believe they, they controlled the king in the league. I believe that David was the king. And they said... We'll get under your authority and we believe in what you do. And we see the blessing of the Lord upon your life. And we are there, amen, to, to help you out and to be a blessing to the people of God. Together we'll work, amen, for the will of God to be accomplished. And they anointed David as king. This is the third anointing of David. The first anointing that David had was when the prophet Samuel went and anointed David for the first time. And he took a horn to anoint David. And the second anointing was by the men of Judah. Amen. And this is found in 2 Samuel 2nd chapter and verse 4. And the third anointing, this one, is by the elders of Israel. There was an increase in the life of David. First anointing, second anointing, and third anointing. When Saul got anointed, by the way, it wasn't really the will of God because God's people wanted to be as other people. And they rejected God, and God said, I will give you a man 
according to your heart. And they, he gave them Saul, King Saul. The Bible says that Saul surpassed the people by his head. He was taller than the majority of the people. But he wasn't really the chosen one of God. God was upset with his people and he gave them somebody according to their heart's desire. And in our society, in Canada and USA, and in many countries where democracy is, people choose according to the way they want their life to be. They'll vote somebody that they agree with according to their lifestyle. Yeah. David got anointed. When Saul got anointed, it was with a veil of oil. It was made by, with metal. It was a metal vessel. And this represents, this anointing represents which is made by man. They took this anointing vessel made out of metal and they anointed Saul with that. But when it came to David, <laughs> they didn't take a, me a metal vessel. They took a horn which demonstrate made by God, which is natural. And Saul and Samuel rather anointed David with this horn of oil. Amen. David received an increased anointing in his life because he was faithful with what God had already given him. And when we get anointed, there's several things that happens in our life. First, the first thing that happens is it officializes us. It identifies us for a cause. Secondly, it makes us noticed by the people who we are. Thirdly, it enables us to accomplish the task that we are called for. Fourthly, this one you won't enjoy, but uh, it's, part, <laughs> it's part of the anointing. You become a target for the enemy, the devil, because you are a threat for his kingdom. Amen. And there's effects of the anointing in our life. The Bible tells us when David got anointed the first time by Samuel... It was, it was, how can I say, secretly. There was a few people. But the second anointing that he received by the men of Judah, it gave him an increase. He had more influence in the life of people. And his territory to, to reign was, was larger and the third anointing that he received, his influence was to be king of Israel. So his territory enlarged and there was God's people under his kingship. Amen. And through this anointing, naturally, in every anointing he received, there was an increase in finances and uh, influence upon the people. And more people came in his life with this new anointing that he received. And the third anointing was, amen, upon all God's people, the country of Israel. Amen. 
And it's the same thing with us. When we obey the will of God and we are found faithful in little things in which God calls us to do, there's going to be an increase, increase of power, increase of influence. There's going to be an increase in the, in the finances, in our life, and in, the, in what we do. Amen. And the Bible says that David reigned 40 years. And David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years in Hebron. He reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, Thou shalt not come in either, thinking David cannot come in either. Amen. David got anointed king in Hebron, which was the capital at that time. But David was a man according to the heart of God. And David knew that the capital truly was supposed to be Jerusalem. So he wanted to do the perfect will of God. And he told his men, listen, the capital in which we are in is Hebron. But truly, the real capital God wants it to be is Jerusalem. So we'll get in the perfect will of God. Amen. We'll change the capital's place. We'll leave Hebron and we'll go to Jerusalem. And this is very important for us to have the blessing of God. We need to do His perfect will. The best that we can, that we know with our knowledge. And David was expecting the blessing he had a good attitude in his heart, and he was there for the glory of God. He wanted to do the will of God. He wanted, amen, for the will of God to be done. His motives were right. But when the Jebusites, the people of Jerusalem, heard that David wanted to invade Jerusalem and take over, oh, no, they didn't want David to come to Jerusalem. So they started to ridiculize David. Oh, the blind will put you away and the lame also, and you won't be able to come inside Jerusalem. And when we decide to do the perfect will of God, we will notice, amen, adversity will come in our life. The devil, amen, don't want us to do the will of God. He's going to fight us. He's going to humble us. He's going to ridiculate, uh, amen, make fun of us. But us, we need to have, like the Bible says, we have the mind of Christ. We need to be, amen, determined to do the will of God. And David didn't let himself, uh, amen, uh, put aside and say, oh, well, uh, the Jebusites are, are too strong and we were not able to and uh, uh, we'll leave it this like it is and we, we are in peace and who cares about Hebron or Jerusalem, amen? No, he was concerned concerning the will of God and David and his men, uh, amen, they had this, this spirit of conquering. They were determined to to take over Jerusalem. And David and his men, they went and they fought the Jebusites. And they came in Jerusalem during the night when the sun was, was, uh, was down, when night was there. And how they, they came into Jerusalem, they, they came in to Jerusalem, they passed, 
Amen. Through the water, under the wall. Amen. And this, we need to humble ourselves uh, if we want to see the glory of the, of the Lord to, to be in our life. We need to, to do things, amen, that br brings discomfort in our life. Uh, amen. We need to humble ourselves. Uh, and they passed through this canal under the wall, and they came inside uh, Jerusalem. Amen. Uh, and when we humble ourselves, uh, God will raise us up. Uh, hallelujah. And David conquered Jerusalem. He took over the stronghold of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, we have strongholds in our life. Maybe it's a stronghold. It's a health issue that you have in your life. Maybe it's a family issue that you have in your home. Maybe it's a, it's a, sometimes it's a work issue. We have Different strongholds that we can have in our life. Sometimes it's a, a certain sins, dependency that we have in our life, uh, and we can't get free. Amen. Uh, but let me tell you, if God be for us, who can be against us?